of our major issues is to uh, promote the use of uh, random drug testing uh, for students. Their, their assertions are not backed up by, um, by evidence or data or research. Yeah, it's successful in the sense that they've actually implemented it. Success in terms of reducing drug use among students, no. Well, we work with schools to develop uh, uh, drug-free school programs to try to keep drugs out of schools. Um, one of our major issues is to uh, promote the use of uh, random drug testing uh, for students. Uh, our experience with student drug testing in the United States is that it's very successful, that it substantially reduces drug use in the schools that have done it. But you can't do it alone. You have to have uh, education programs. You have to have counseling programs for the students. So we always say that you do it in a whole context uh, of, a, of a total program. There certainly are a lot of people, uh, both from the U.S. government and from uh, some NGOs in the United States, that advocate the use of random drug testing in schools um, as a way of reducing youth drug use. Um, unfortunately for them, their, their assertions are not backed up by, um, by evidence or data or research. In fact, um, there's only been one uh, large study that's been done on uh, on the issue of student drug testing, it was done out of the University of Michigan, um, actually conducted by a researcher who the federal government hires to do their, their Monitoring the Future study, which they're quite proud of. Um, and this is a study that looked at about 94,000 students in uh, about 9,000 schools across the United States. And what it found was um, that drug usage rates were basically identical um, amongst students that uh, were in schools that tested and, school, and students that were in schools that did not. Um, however, what they also found was that uh, there was a, a, a sort of a worsening of the attitudes um, of, uh, among students who are drug tested towards their uh, teachers and guidance counselors and other people that they need to feel close enough to if they do have issues with drugs or if their friends have issues with drugs that they can go to and talk to them as a trustworthy authority figure. It's, it's testing kids who are in after school programs. These kids are engaged in sports, they're engaged in chess clubs, they're engaged in language labs and they're testing those kids for their drug use. Now, surely we want kids engaged in after-school activity. If you're going to single out these kids and if they test positive in the drug test, and then you're going to give them enhanced counseling, and then finally eject them from these after-school programs, you're going to have after-school programs which are drug-free, but you're going to also have a bunch of kids who have time on their hands, who are already drug-involved, who then are going to probably increase their drug use. So as success, yeah, it's successful in the sense that they've actually implemented it. Success in terms of reducing drug use among students, no. The other part about school drug testing that's particularly problematic is that the drug that it most like that it tests positive for most often is marijuana because it stays in the system longer. So if you had a national policy of school drug testing, one of the unintended consequences are is that you would push people who are inclined to use drugs to use more dangerous drugs if they want to avoid having a positive drug test. So I don't think anything that would have young people, you know, um, move more towards cocaine or heroin or other types of drugs is a good policy. The best method of keeping young people free of drugs is through honest um, and trusting dialogue between both parents and teachers and guidance counselors, kids who have very good, strong, trusting, honest relationships with their parents, with their teachers, with their guidance counselors are much less likely to have uh, drug abuse problems. And if they do have you know, issues with drugs or, or maybe a friend has issues with drugs, that they feel much more comfortable going and talking to them about that and seek getting help either for themselves or for their friends. Um, so putting more money into um, after school programs where these kids are supervised after school and doing something constructive and fun um, that uh, is a, you know, a diversion from using drugs. Um, putting more money into guidance counselors um, where you know, so students have, have uh, superiors that they can talk to on a regular basis in school um, that they trust. Um, increasing the pay of guidance counselors and teachers and so forth. Um, and I would say reality-based drug education. <laughs> <laughs>